going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about the NAB AFL draft that ha has happened over the last couple of days and the rookie draft that happened today, which was Friday. It's been a massive couple of days for the club, picking up five brand spanking new players to add to our list and also recruiting again Sam Mays. Our list is finalized for 2022, so let's get straight into it and see what these players are going to add to our list next year. Well, it's been a very interesting last couple of days to see who Port Adelaide have tried, uh, drafted and what picks we've traded to get into the position we have. And it all started Wednesday night uh, for the first 20 picks of the AFL draft. And pick 12 came about for Port Adelaide in, um, in quick succession, actually. And by quick succession, I mean it took literally four hours to get to pick 12. Um, but Josh Sin was the first recruit to the club. We traded up from pick 14 to pick 12. Uh, with West Coast sacrificing a future second round of pick to get there because we, we knew after uh, Nasaya Wanganin Malira was picked up by St Kilda that Essendon would go for the next best available and that would be Josh Sin. So smart strategic play by Port to trade up with West Coast to get to pick 12, get Josh Sin. He's someone that adds a lot of pace, a lot of speed and has a great left foot kick as well. And we've seen over the highlights of the last couple of days and all the discussions um, that we've had with between ourselves on Twitter and all the fans' opinions and also um, expert opinions on articles and uh, and on the coverage as well. I was saying Josh Sin was touted to be a top five pick, um, and obviously with injuries over the last couple of years, his form was kind of based on his under sixteens, and we haven't seen a lot of him play footy. But insiders say that he was and pretty much a lock to be a top five pick, but also. As I said, with injuries as such, that pushed him down a little bit. But to get him at pick 12, we found, I think, a diamond in the rough um, there. And, you know, it'll it'll wait and see what happens. But I think he'll be ready-made to play next year. And uh, his silky left foot kick, it's touted as a half-backer. But I reckon he'll push forward to the wing and possibly play through the midfield. And um, will give plenty more of an option for Ken Hinckley and co. to, um, to think about when playing him and where to play him. Um, and also, I did love... Uh, when his name was called out, a little fist pump uh, to his family. That suggested to me that he it, it's it's a good culture that we have and he's wanting to come into state to play uh, for footy, uh, for Port Adelaide to play footy and really enjoy himself. And um, I'm guessing the, the recruiting staff and, and the pitch that we had to him um, before the draft, he kind of knew that, that that's the place he wanted to go of all places. And I'm glad that uh, we got our man and we set our targets and we, we got Josh Sin and I tweeted out, uh, PAFC only draft sins, not tragedies. And I thought that was some of my finest work. But regardless, Josh Sin, welcome to Port Adelaide. I look forward to seeing what he can bring to the club next year. We head into night two, and it took a very long time to wait until we had our first pick. I think it was like 9 o'clock at night. We finally got to pick 55. And obviously with the bids and um, a few trades that we did, we traded again, I think, with uh, Carlton to get up the draft a little bit more to, to just secure ourselves in case there was a bid on Jace Bergon and I'll get to him in a second but we picked up Hugh Jackson Hugh Jackson Port have selected Hugh Jackson <laughs> um, first and foremost and um, that was a great pick up I thought he, he slid it was touted as a top 30 pick actually and to get to that far down, he's an SA boy um, at North Adelaide. He's a Port Adelaide believer, been all his life, which uh, sits well with me. And um, he, He's a little uh, midfielder that I think can do a bit of damage and he'll do some some good stuff, I think, for the Magpies especially. Whether or not he gets a game at Port Adelaide uh, in the AFL next year will be um, something to wait and see on. But I think if he pushes right and he's a ball magnet as well, and that's some, something we've kind of lacked. Uh, I think you know Ollie Wines and and Travis Boat getting majority of the of the ball and um, no one else really having that tendency to get that 25 plus and here's Hugh Jackson doing 35 40s in the Sandful and for the North Adelaide Footy Club so uh, a great pick up I think a ball magnet something that will help and he's got a great skill delivering inside 52 so um, that's something we've targeted speed and skill and I think the first two picks have done wonders so pick 55 we've seen a pick 55 before and Robbie Gray. So um, if he can live up to half of that expectation, we've got a great pick. The next one, Dante's peak, Dante Vizantini. Um, I think that's European. That's got to be European because it's a beautiful name. Um, a big, tall ruckman, probably a project ruckman, if anything. He's quite raw, he's quite skinny, but he's got a good grab on him. Can play forward as well and uh, probably a three- to four-year project for us to develop. But, you know, when you've got Lysette, you know, in his peak, in his form, 
and then you've got Sam Hayes ready made to be doing wonders next year and beyond, we can afford to have someone like Dante building himself properly, getting into that rhythm of being there just in case we need something um, as, as of a backup in case the other two go down. But he's there, he's raw, he's ready to go uh, to play in the Magpies and I think we're going to be seeing quite a bit of him um, throughout his career because I, I like the way he moves. I've seen his highlights, he's got great hands and for a Ruckman it, it's crucial to have that. And um, He's tad as a Ruckman but I think he's played some time forward throughout um, his build up into the draft. So it'll be interesting to see how he pans out but definitely one to watch and uh, it reminds me of, you know, Pete Laddams was a, the same sort of pickup. Um, you know, he, he, we didn't really see him playing AFL footy and next minute within a couple of years, it just clicked into form and here he was for the last two years playing pretty good footy. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Dante pans out, but regardless, uh, a good pick up for Port. Lastly, for the Thursday night draft, we covered, um, I think a lot of people have seen it, and I wanted to spend a bit of time on it. Chase Burgoyne, father-son selection of Peter Burgoyne, uh, and we've seen photos of Peter and, and Jace at the club, you know, handballing to each other. Peter still looks like he could be rookie drafted. Um, he looks in great form. And Jace, um, he's, he's ready to go. I think he... Pick 60 for father-son, I think a lot of the clubs would have thought, yeah, okay, Port Adelaide's going to pick him up regardless. Let's just pick whatever is best available at the time for them. And Jace is probably higher, a second or third rounder. Um, and... and it's definitely great to see another burger on at the club. Unfortunately, Trent didn't work out, but I think Peter um, knows that Jace, uh, in particular, he's ready to go. He averaged some great numbers for the under-18s in the Woodburgers times. Played a few sample games for the Port Magpies last year as well, and um, he looks a good crop. He looks like the right burger. And long hair, you know, speedy, silky, smooth. It's going to be interesting to see how he pans out, but he's definitely looking to play... Uh, across that half back into the wing, can push forward, can go in the midfield. He's a typical Burgoyne with Peter and Sean doing the same thing. So I'll be looking forward to seeing what Jace can do at Port Adelaide. Um, and it's a pity Xavier Dersmel is wearing um, number seven because I think number seven on the back of Jace would look very nice as a Burgoyne. Not to say that Xavier doesn't deserve it because obviously the Ebert name um, carries on and Xavier is a perfect fit for number seven. I'm just saying there's a bit of an entourage as such. Uh, a bit of a montage to Peter when he wore number seven. You know, seven or eight, just saying. But um, no, they definitely uh, have got the number seven right. But we go into the rookie draft, and obviously Sam Mays was picked up, uh, relisted as a rookie. So no need to talk about that too much, um, other than he'll probably do the same thing he does every year. Uh, could be a sub, could be this, could be that. He's there for depth, and he's doing a good job about it. Trent Jumont's the other one. He was the one I was kind of keen on actually picking up even when he was delisted. And I think that's something crucial to us. A, a big body midfielder um, who has some skill. I think he's going to provide a lot more than just on field. I think being ha seeing him having leadership qualities, he'll help out in the Magpies, be that depth we need. But also I think we'll play him a few times throughout uh, next year as well. He's touted to be something... Um, yeah, he's only 26 as well. So touted to be something a little bit more. And I hope fans don't expect him to be best 22 material. But I think as a pickup, as depth, and you know, similar to Sam Mays and what he's done, I think Trent Dumont can do a similar thing. So it'd be great to see him produce a solid uh, rest of his career at Port Adelaide. But regardless, all of these pickups, um, I'm pretty happy about. It's good. It's a good spread. It's a good difference. Um, would have liked probably a, a small forward just to you know create um, you know, a, a, a little bit more depth in that area, just because. I know Ratio's in there, I know Rose is in there, Butters, they can all play forward, but we lost Woodcock, and I think having a replacement there would have been handy just because I think the likes of Butters and Rosie are going to play more midfield time. So to have something um, there just in case would have been nice, but that's my only pick. And I've seen a lot of report cards as well. Um, a pluses, B minuses, and all this. We've got a B, I think, in a couple of, of the reports. And I'm like, why are we report carding the draft? Can you just tell me? Can you explain to me why we're report carding the draft when not one single draftee has played a game yet. Nor gone to a training session. All they've done is take photos in the Guernseys. Oh, he's amazing. Look at him. He suits the Guernseys so well. Tell me about it when he's on the field. Thank you for watching this draft recap. I really appreciate all the support this year throughout all the, the season, trade period, the draft. We haven't uh, had a great momentum. It's been a tough time since the prelim, but I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you very much for your support. It's been amazing this year. 
a couple more videos to come for the rest of the year but from then on i think majority of december is going to be pretty quiet for myself so if you want to hit me up hit me up on instagram uh, or twitter that's where i'll be still doing a, uh, a fairly active um profile so if you want to keep in contact hit me up on there but until then it's been a wonderful season i look forward to producing some more content in 2022 about port adelaide but until then we've got a couple more videos to come as i said but it's been wonderful. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content coming your way in 2022. That's my pitch. Thank you for watching. My name's Anthony, and as always, count the pair.